Hi, my name is Colin Kaminsky. I do the research and development for MB. And uh, this is a oil brew house that uh, we've been working on for about four years now. And I'd kind of like to walk through and do some features. Um, I was a master brewer for 15 years. Um, before that and after that, I was an R&D designer. So I get to do all sorts of fun things here and I get to walk you through it today. The main feature of the system that makes it really exciting to me is that it's an oil-based system. So instead of heating up each vessel separately, what we do is we heat up a big vessel of oil and we're able to pump it wherever we want. Now this is kind of like a steam system works, except a steam system, you have a boiler that can explode, you have water chemistry issues, you have to bring in consultants and do water testing. With the oil system, it just runs. One of the problems with a traditional electric brew house is that the elements scorch. And that's always been a flavor concern for me. Um, and it's also been a cleaning concern for me. So the exciting thing about the oil system is not only is the floor jacketed in oil, but the jacket goes about this high up the tank. That allows us to have a huge amount of surface area. So we don't have to apply a lot of energy in one spot. We get to, to smooth that out and supply a little bit of energy all over. Now that this gives us some really big advantages for scorching, for cleaning, for color control um, uh, and flavor control. Okay, well, another important feature is all the vessels here, not only are they much larger than you need them to be to give you lots of headspace to work, but they also have a lot of insulation in them, which makes them safe to touch while you're brewing, but also saves us energy while we're brewing. One of the very convenient uh, features of the system is that it's really easy to install. It comes in on a skid. There's some water hookups on that side, one for water in, one for a drain. You've got ward out on this side, and then you run power into the box and, and you're pretty much ready to brew at that point. Now, the exciting thing about power into the box is we're only heating oil and the oil we can move to any kettle we want. So we're using about half the current draw of having every kettle on at the same time. Because in the brew process, you never need every kettle on at the same time. But if you've got every kettle hooked up to the wall, the code requires you to supply current to have power on all three kettles all the time. We don't need that, so we end up hooking up half the power of a normal system. Gives us a much faster install, smaller wire, cheaper electrician fees, better install. Okay, so the business side of the system is this oil tank right here. This oil tank has the heaters. These pipes move oil out to the, to the uh, system, and we've got some valves here to turn it on and off. Each tank has a bypass valve, so if something happens and you lose power or lose a solenoid in the middle of a brew, you just bypass it. We add the oil to the system here. The system comes shipped without oil, but you can add any food grade thermal transfer oil. There's lots of options to choose from um, and you will have to replace it periodically. Oil lasts between three to five years and you can tell it's time to replace your oil if the system starts to lose efficiency. If suddenly it starts to take longer to heat up the system, it's because the oil is broken down and it's not able to transfer as much heat out of the oil reservoir and into the vessels. I was really lucky. I got to brew on one of these oil systems a lot. Um, we were doing some prototyping of wort recipes and got to, to spend a ton of time brewing, um, which is one of my favorite things in the world to do, and I hope it's yours. So in the morning, you can have everything hot for yourself if you want by setting this timer to come on in the morning. You can really configure this in any way you would like. If you just want the hot liquor, that's one thing. If you want to have some water in other vessels, maybe you want to you want to have one set up for cleaning temperature, another one set for sanitizing temperature, and your hot liquor, you can have all that hot in the morning. You can get it all done. We've got these beautiful PIDs, one for every vessel. We set the oil temp with our, our nice PID. This controls the oil temp. Um, we can set it either to auto control or we can force it on all the time which is really nice. Sometimes you just say, okay, I don't, I don't need the PID in this. I just need the really hot oil right now. Um, this controls our hot liquor temp. Again, we can set it to on, off, auto. Um, there's our boil kettle temp and our mash liquor temp. We've got variable frequency drives. One controls the boil kettle pump. One controls the mash rake. We've got controls for the pump. We, if we set the oil pump to auto, that means if any vessel is calling for heat, the pump will turn on on the, on the oil pump. This turns on the hot liquor pump so that we can um, use hot water to mash in or use hot water for sparging. This turns on the boil kettle pump so that we can pump off the bottom. The boil kettle pump has lots of tasks that it can do in this system. 
Um, it also has enough strength that if you speed it up uh, with your VFD, you can CIP the entire system, um, slow it back down and get a, get a nice sparge rate, uh, a nice flow through rate for sparging. Um, this is the, um, the rake system. Um, it has a reverse uh, off and forward and has a VFD on it. So the, the nice thing about this is you mash in forward when you're completely done with your brew day, you put it on reverse, slowly speed it up and it'll break all the mash up, push it out the door so that you don't have to shovel. Your brew day always starts with your hot liquor tank. That's the mo most important thing uh, uh, for me in the morning because I like to get my water chemistry right. I hope you're all doing your water chemistry. I wrote the water book. You should do the water chemistry. Get your water chemistry all mixed up and mash in. Now this, this hot liquor tank's got some interesting features. You've got the temperature that's digitally over there, but just in case you, you need an instant read, hey, is my digital probe really working? You've also got this analog thermometer in nice easy view. On the back side here, you don't have to CIP your hot liquor very often, but if you do, there's a CIP port ready for you. This is the mash tun. It has a slotted screen in the bottom that's perfectly flush with the bottom of your grain outdoor. That makes it easy to clean. Um, we've got this uh, sight gauge. Sight gauge is really important when you're mashing. Always have your sight gauge on when you're mashing. You think, well, I already know the mash. I can look through the lid. But the sight gauge connects to the bottom of the vessel. And why that's important is if you start pumping off the bottom and it pulls a vacuum, it's gonna pull air in and it's gonna take your level all the way down to zero. Your liquid level in here is up to here. The liquid level in your sight gauge is down to there. You know you're about to collapse your mash screen and you need to shut off the pump. The, we've got a nice sight gauge right here to check for work clarity. We've got another one down here we can check for work clarity. So that gives us a lot of nice options. This is the optional rake. Not all of them have a rake. You can either add grain through the main door or there's a four inch port in the back that you can hook up and dump straight out of a mill or maybe uh, out of a hopper that you're, you've suspended above the system. This is our boil kettle. The boil kettle um, is the business end of any brew system. You can't really uh, brew unless you're boiling. It sets our sanitation point and about six other things that are super important that I'll leave to you to figure out. But one of the nice things about the boil kettle here is the bottom slopes down in. And when we're cleaning, we drain off the middle at the lowest point, but we've got a higher point over here that we can pull off of. And that leaves the tube cone after Whirlpool in the center of the, in the kettle. Um, and it allows us to pull off the edge. We uh, collect all the steam off the top. The, um, this is, this actually doesn't uh, add water to, to condensate the steam. That's actually a CIP arm to clean that. But on the backside, we're spraying water in and that cools the steam down and allows us to pull it off to a drain from the back of the system. When we're done boiling, we have this tangential port that comes in and the tangential port allows us to spin up the kettle and make that nice hop cone that, that we're going to uh, uh, utilize as much wort as we can without pulling hops through um, to our heat exchanger. This is a two stage heat exchanger. So we've got uh, wort that goes all the way through. On this half, we've got water that cools the hottest side and that water gets collected and put back into the hot liquor tank for the next brew. From this side, we hook up glycol and we can cool it down even further. So using this to pull down to lager temperatures is very easy. Then the wort's gonna go through by this thermometer so we can verify that it's at a nice cool temperature so that we can add oxygen through this air stone. We can check its clarity on the way out of the heat exchanger and then we pull it straight out from here to the fermenter. You know, every brewer's favorite part of brewing beer is drinking beer, but there's a lot of work involved too. One of the biggest parts of the job is cleaning. Everybody knows you've got to keep your everything clean in order to brew nice, good, delicious beer. And for to make that easier, this entire system has a CIP loop built into it. So you you build up your chemicals. You you could either do it in the in the hot liquor or the boil. I tend to like to do it in the boil kettle. Um, get the boil kettle sprayed out get some chemistry mixed up into here, and then pump through the, the boil pump all the way through the system. And you, you can bring it back. This is the spray balls that go to the backside of the system. You can run through, clean each one separately. You've got a spray ball up here as well. That gets the whole system nice and clean. Another nice feature here is there's a wart filter. So 
while this doesn't really uh, uh, strain out a lot of stuff, it will keep big particles from coming out and clogging your heat exchanger. Um, nobody likes to clean their heat exchanger. No, really nobody likes to rebuild their heat exchanger. So what this does is the wart comes in here, goes out the sides. It's got a, a, a screen about like a window screen on the inside, and then a much coarser, stronger screen on the outside. And that keeps big chunks of things from going into your heat exchanger. Um, you can ask people about what it's like to have a green scrubby end up in your heat exchanger. What we're looking at here is a three barrel system, but we can produce this in two barrel, three barrel, three and a half barrel, five barrel, seven barrel, and 10 barrel sizes. We can produce it without the hot liquor tank. If you're putting this in a brewery as a pilot system, you might have a, a 60 barrel hot liquor tank all ready to go, and you don't need the hot liquor tank. We can save you the money and save you the space. The rake is also optional. You, on a larger system, you're probably gonna want it for sure, but on a two barrel system, you might not want it. Again, if you're a pilot system, your main system has a rake, you probably want a rake even on a small system. Again, I'm Colin Kaminsky. I'm a master brewer. I love this system. I've had a lot of fun working on it, both brewing and designing, making sure it works for you. Um, if you need some more information, because I can't cover everything in a video like this, go to morebeerpro.com and we've got everything you need to know about this system.